George thought it would be fun to sit inside a cozy house and watch a storm with the man and your bow. George, you can't go outside when there's thunder and lightning. Oh, your bow is out there. Don't worry. He'll get wet, but we'll clean and dry him before he has time to rust. As soon as the storm quiets down, we'll go get him. Hey, how about a game of tic-tac-toe? George usually really enjoyed tic-tac-toe, but this time he couldn't get his mind off your bow. The storm really did a number on the beach. Don't worry, George. Yorbo's a tough little robot. We'll find him. But Yorbo wasn't under that seaweed. Or any of the seaweed. <sighs> okay, so we've searched on top of the sand and under the seaweed, which means Yorbo must be buried in the sand. <laughs> Robot. Oh, wow! I found gold! Wow, or a CD player! Hey, that's mine! I forgot all about it! Oh, wow! Wasn't that a great storm? I always find such great stuff after a storm, you know? <laughs> Nifty, huh? It's a metal detector. It helps you find buried metal. Now, the louder it beeps, the closer you're getting to metal. Now, when it beeps like crazy, bingo! Using the detector, George found lots of metal things. <laughs> oh, the batteries are dead. I'll have to recharge them, but I'll bring this back tomorrow in case you're still looking. Bye now! Thank you. <laughs> well, George can't find his robot. It's buried in the sand. Hmm. Is it made of metal? Uh-huh. You could try using a metal detector. We borrowed one, but it ran out of batteries. Well, metal detectors are easy to make. Huh? Sure. First, grab the portable radio from the shelf. OK. AM, FM radio, check. Next, find the calculator. A uh, bottom drawer on the desk. <laughs> then get some tape. A top drawer on the desk. <laughs> now take the radio and switch it to AM. Okay. Then turn the knob all the way to the highest radio station number. But make sure you get static and not an actual station. Turn up the volume. Then turn on the calculator and tape it to the radio. Fantastic! You see, the radio and calculator act as a magnet. When it finds things that would stick to a magnet, the radio beeps. George was confused. He had already searched half the beach. But which half? If only the beach were smaller. Then, George remembered tic-tac-toe. He could break up the beach into smaller sections, like a tic-tac-toe board. If George could mark off the squares he searched, then he'd know where he'd looked and where he needed to look. Ah. <laughs> Hi, George. <laughs> You want to make a grid to help you keep track of your search? <laughs> oh, great idea, George. All set. Let me know if you need anything. No luck, huh? Yorbo had to be in this last square. He had to. <laughs> Way to go, 
George, you found him. Your ball is great, yes? Aha! <laughs> Have fun. <sighs> well, I guess this means I can get back to the thrilling conclusion of my book. Wait for me! <laughs> Bill was not going to be happy about this. <laughs> to the bunnies, this was a big game of hide-and-seek, which was not good for George. Because if there's one thing you should know about bunnies, <laughs> it's that they play to win. George would have to outthink them. <laughs> one down. Six to go. Three down, four to go. <laughs> Squirrels don't like surprises, not even small ones. He counted the bowls. He caught Whitey, Spotty, Black Ears, Cottontail, Brownie, and a jumpy squirrel. Ooh. Um, add being grabbed by a monkey to the list of surprises that squirrels really don't like. Not all footprints lead to cute little bunnies. Ooh. Hi, George. What you doing? <laughs> Bill was almost done. George's time was running out. George had caught every bunny except Herbert Nininger, and Bill would be home soon. <laughs> George had looked everywhere. What he needed was a bunny expert, but who knew a lot about bunnies? It wasn't going to work. George tried to explain this was no time to play with a fuzz ball. She had to find Herbert Nininger. This was no ordinary fuzz. This was the end of Herbert Nininger. Hey, George. Keeping the bunnies company? Thanks. As a reward for doing that and being so patient, I'm going to let you pet one right now. Petting a bunny isn't easy. It's all about maintaining control. 
Step one, unlock latch. <laughs> but you want to pet a bunny, don't you? <laughs> okay, you sure are one careful kid. <laughs> hey, how'd that acorn get in there? Guided by the scientists, the rocket hooked onto the telescope. It was time for the spacewalk. George, your job is to push this button and let me back inside. <laughs> this keeps me attached to the rocket while I'm outside. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. What uh oh? Um, the tether link ripped off my suit. Then you can't go outside. Oh boy, we have to scrub the mission. Oh no! Oh. Let George do it! <laughs> and don't forget, be a good little monkey space walker. Kid really gets around. <laughs> George knew what he had to do first. Remove the nuts using the wrench. Uh -oh. hmm. huh? Why didn't it move? He knew the rule. Lefty Lucy. <laughs> and righty tighty. He wasn't the first monkey to mix up his Lucy and his Tidy. Just the first one in space. <laughs> oh, uh, did I mention George only has enough air to last two minutes? Uh, well, you did now. George, you must complete the mission expeditiously. I mean, finish up and get back in the rocket very quickly. <laughs> Putting replacements in was pretty easy. Then it wasn't. <laughs> Maybe he needed to put this stuff in exactly where the old stuff was. This last hole was a completely different shape. George, you need to head inside now. George? I'm going out there after him. You can't. You don't have a tether. Oh, boy. Why, it wasn't a different shape at all. <laughs> now he needed righty tidy. George, you have only five seconds of air left. That's it, I'm going out. No, you'll float out into space. George did it! 
The telescope controls work again. Great work, guys. You're coming home. Oh, it wasn't two minutes. It was an hour and two minutes. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> the library's full of helpful books. And they've got a really big clock on top. He hopes studying the big clock would show him exactly what to do with the little clock. George was glad that noise had stopped. But maybe it was time to pack up and go home. That clock has never stopped, ever! The big clock on the library stopped. Well, let's go! Wait, Stu. What are we supposed to do? We're the fire department. We'll figure it out. Mr. Rilo, the big clock stopped. The big library clock that the whole city depends upon? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that clock has never stopped, ever. We must move like lightning. Sure, he had all the tools, but George still felt like he was missing something. <gasps> okay, miss, thank you. Uh, please, step outside. I must listen. What's a little monkey like you doing in a huge clock like this? <laughs> well, would you like me to help you? <laughs> okay, and this goes there. Now, you see? <gasps> what a beautiful clock. Did you make it? I know everything about clocks, but not one thing about understanding monkey. <laughs> well, be more careful in the future, eh? Time is a precious thing. What have we said about bringing pigeons indoors, George? Oh, it's all right. Are you showing him my clock? <laughs> well, go ahead.
George, how did this heavy metal toolbox get so... It's from my mother. Happy birthday, love mom. Aww. I'm late for my appointment. Hold on to this for me, will you, George? Uh -huh. I'll be back at seven, and then we'll celebrate. Oh. Uh -huh. Bye, George. Hi. You want to have a party? <gasps> Ooh. Shh. A surprise party? Even better. <laughs> All you need is A, an apartment, B, your buddies, C, a cake, and D, decorations. A, B, C, D. That didn't sound hard at all. The man with the yellow hat would be back at seven. George had only four hours to get the party ready. And the man's buddies were listed in this book. Since you invited me to your party, I'm gonna give you my special all-fruit frozen cake on the house. <laughs> Just pick a size, Giorgio. Oh. A big party needed a big cake. Ah. <laughs> the big one. Surprise. <laughs> Looks like quite a celebration. Is it a birthday? Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Say, I could blow that up for you. It'd make a great decoration. <gasps> Hiya, George. Everyone's coming. I just had to say yellow hat, and they all said yes. George had picked too wide of a cake. It wouldn't fit in the freezer. Luckily, it was cold out on the balcony. That took care of C, cake. George had also picked too big of a poster and a too small ladder. Everything was the wrong size. his wish. His apartment was the perfect size for a monkey. Now, he just needed the cake and decorations. The cake was in the freezer, the poster was on the wall, and the star was no trouble at all. George was ready for his guests. <laughs> Hello, Giorgio. But not ready for their size. I hope we're not too early. Uh, oh, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> hey, 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 he's coming! <laughs> George is right. We have to hide. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is too small. Shh. Was it a plant I can hide? Yeah. 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 Hi, everybody. Surprise! A party? For me? Oh, gee, th thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, me too. Uh, 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 how about some music? A George-sized apartment was fine for little monkeys, but not at all good for people-sized people. <laughs> This was more like it. Everything was the size it should be. George was doing great. He was able to follow Charky everywhere with his ears. Uh, did a black dog flip by, followed by a blindfolded monkey? <sighs> you mean there's nothing wrong with my glasses? Which way did they go? Where 
was he? <laughs> These things didn't feel familiar. <laughs> what were they for? <laughs> What's that sound? Hmm. Sounds like a hose. A hose? <laughs> George, did you pull the pump valves? <laughs> Had George lost Charky? Nothing he touched felt furry. And he didn't hear her. Ah, but his nose knew that wet dog aroma. She was close by. <laughs> Why don't we get any normal visitors here? She was hiding again, but George knew how to find a silent, wet dog. <laughs> Fur. <laughs> He'd caught up with Charky, but it didn't smell like a wet dog. And this dog was too small to be Charky. <laughs> this dog was a cat. Delicious smell plus a cat, he knew exactly where he was. With gnocchi at Chef Pischetti's place. A place with great food is exactly where Charky would go. Oh no, what have you done? My pasta. You know, normally if I heard yelling followed by crashing, I'd worry it's George, but... He's at a party. Uh, did a black dog flip by, followed by a blindfolded monkey? How come everybody in town seen him, but I can't find him? wasn't so noisy here. And there was grass. Why, even blindfolded, he knew he was in endless park. <laughs> and that wet dog smelled close. George smelled and touched and found something that felt like Charky. When he heard her bark, he knew it was Charky. I searched everywhere. I can't find George and Sharky. Did you look there? Now just take one swing this time, okay? <laughs> this time, George didn't just use the bat. He used sound. And touch. <laughs> and smell. <laughs> I taught him everything he knows. George had used all his senses except one to find the pinata. And that one was taste. <laughs> Okay, the only rule is that you cannot cut through the corn stalks. Everybody ready? Yes. <laughs> On your marks, get set, maze! So, we should go this way. <laughs> oh. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I 
know the bell sounded like it's that way, but we are here. The map says left. <laughs> but, hold on, George. <sighs> oh, tough break for the little monkey. He's hit another dead end, leaving them in last place there. Here we are. <laughs> you want to ring the bell? <laughs> Team George is the last to reach checkpoint one. I doubt they'll ever catch Team Quint. Now turn. Hmm. Just turn? Well, whatever you say, Tina. See? Here's the bridge and the red tractor. It it's all on the map. The maze looked a lot more like the map when seen from above. And now George could easily see the path to the next bell. <laughs> I'm right behind you, George. Team George is back in the race. But uh oh, folks, looks like Sprint is running in circles. OK, George, which way now? Oh, I see. Every direction looks the same, so we can't orient the map. I guess we're lost. George saw the bridge, the duck pond, even Leslie the cow. <laughs> but they were all in the wrong place. Until George turned the map just right. Now everything lined up. And George knew exactly where they had to go. <laughs> that way? Let's go. Are we lost again? George, we're almost to the finish line. <laughs> Our map! <laughs> Follow the cow? <laughs> Don't you still want to race? <laughs> I hear them. They're coming. It could be all over any second. <laughs> this is it. And the winner is... a cow! A cow? Well, I don't think the cow's a contestant. <laughs> no, this is our winner, Team George! <laughs> we won? But how? Oh, here, I don't need it anymore. Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, Bye. makes us third. Stop. Destination reached. Excuse me? Looks like you two win the golden cob. That's one smart monkey, knowing that Leslie can always find the barn at milking time. Oh, very clever, George. <laughs> cool trophy. Good race. Uh -huh. well, <laughs> yes, listeners, it has been quite a day. Has anyone seen my microphone? Now watch closely, George, and witness a little magic. First, I dip the egg in the yellow dye. Then, I dip the yellow egg into the blue dye and presto, it comes out, uh, green. Exactly. But if yellow and blue made green, hmm. 
George wondered, what would blue and red make? Why, George, you've created a brand new fruit, a perp banana. George, you're yellow! Huh? <laughs> oh no, I gave my guarantee and now a whole monkey is wrecked. Betsy, what am I gonna do? Don't look at me. You're in charge, Chef Steve. Uh, there, problem solved. No one will ever know he's yellow now. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm a genius. When red and blue made purple, maybe he could find what colors made brown and dye himself back to normal. George, no! Orange. <laughs> oh, a blue dog and an orange monkey. What could be worse than that? <laughs> Where'd they go? I don't know, but we better find them before the bird watchers do. Voila! I see the red bird perched on the stop sign by the fire truck. Are there many orange monkeys in this park? No, I have the only monkey in town and he's monkey colored. Usually. Oh no. George, there you are. Where's Charky? <laughs> <laughs> it's very close. <gasps> I see the red tanager. Don't anybody move. <sighs> Let's see. If I remember right, red and blue makes purple, and purple and orange make brown. Just hurry before the bird watchers get back. I am sure George is clean as a cucumber. They're here. What do we do? Hide? Oh, oh. Where's George? <sighs> as a chef, I cannot tell a lie. George fell into the... <laughs> oh, there you are. Taking another bath to keep extra clean for the picture? <laughs> And to think, I thought that I might find a messy monkey. Oh. I got the egg. Whoa! George, you're... You're red. He's as red as the red summer tanager. <gasps> this gives me a fabulous idea. A true dedication to the red summer tanager. This will be the best bird watchers cover ever. And so it was, thanks to a certain colorful monkey. <laughs> 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 <laughs>